All right, welcome back to Mr. Metropolis' flip videos and flip class. Now we're going to learn about a Enlightenment philosopher that is probably one of my favorites. And when I was in high school, I was so interested in uh, Voltaire because he's. I think that a lot of you guys in high school are going to really like Voltaire when you learn what he talks about. I think you're going to connect with his ideas. His real name is Francois Marie de Wy. Francois Marie. Dewey in French, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. My wife will get me because she can speak French. Now, Francois was better known by his pen name Voltaire, and I'm going to call him Voltaire, and that's how most people know him as in the, in the world. He was a French writer. He's actually a public activist who played an important role in the Enlightenment. So he's actually an activist, somebody that advocated to change government and the things, the way things were going. And he was this guy really backed up everything he said. Uh, he was in jail at the age of 14, challenging the, the king, and, in, and basically challenging the clergy and the king. So challenging the powers of France uh, before the French Revolution. Uh, he's going to die before the French Revolution actually happens. But could you imagine being in high school, like a freshman or sophomore in high school, and you're already in jail because you're writing pamphlets and you're talking bad about the government? I think probably most teenagers at the time would probably want to go hang out or pick up a girl. And actually when he was in jail, he wrote his probably his most famous book. It's a real short book. It's, it's really interesting to read. It's called Candide, and it's this philosophical book that talks about how negative everything is in the world and how important criticism is. Now, many consider Voltaire a philosopher. I would say he's a philosopher. I think he has a philosophical point of view, and he really emphasizes some big ideas that the United States government really used, uh, especially the Founding Fathers when they created the Constitution and wrote the uh, Declaration of Independence. He did, however, get his ideas across through his writing and art. Voltaire stressed the importance of freedom of speech. Now I know every, everybody that's in my class right now, now they want to learn about him. This idea that freedom of speech, believe it or not, yeah, maybe it had been around at some point or somebody thought about it, but the idea that you, that you really need to criticize the freedom of speech to criticize the government. So he didn't want freedom of speech so people could walk around and say bad words when they go out to eat at Steak and Shake. He wanted freedom of speech so you, yes, yeah, so you could express yourself through art, but more importantly, you could criticize the government. If we can't criticize the government and we can't give feedback, then the governments may do exactly what they want. And in many cases, that's what had happened historically. The monarchies, the kings and queens that did some really insane things, and we talked about how they did everything crazy from... Um, Caligula, the Roman emperor, had sent basically a legion of troops to go to the north of France and bring back sand. And he, he really did make his horse a senator in the Senate. Just like crazy, insane things because they had absolute power. You couldn't really criticize them because there'd be consequences. Louis XIV, that we talked to the French Revolution, built the most expensive palace probably in the history of the world. The Palace of Versailles he spent half the money of France when they were the most powerful country at the time. Uh, on just one palace, just wasting money while people are starving. It could have really done a lot to help his country. So Voltaire is very critical of this stuff, and he says that we have to check the government. Now, so, some people, including myself, really think that there is a, a hidden fourth branch of government in our system, and can you guys take a guess who checks the government outside of the government? And they kind of act as a fourth branch. And I would argue the media. So really, if you're a good media, if you want to be a journalist or a political writer, your job is really to try to find mistakes the government's making so that we can correct those mistakes. And some people say, well, that's unpatriotic. If you talk bad about the government, you're not being patriotic. And Voltaire would say, no, probably one of the most patriotic things you can do as an American is to speak your mind about the government. Then you're more likely to vote. You're more likely to write about it. And bluntly, as a human being, I've never been a better teacher or a better person without any feedback. So how could the government be a better government if nobody ever criticizes them? As a student, do you really learn? How much do you learn if you write a paper and then you don't get any feedback? Are the teachers not helping you or telling you what mistakes you're making so you make a better paper? I don't think that criticism is really a bad thing, inherently bad. In a lot of cultures, uh, and I'm Greek-American, Criticism is a good thing. We learn from it. It's okay to argue and, and, and disagree about things 
And then it really gets you thinking about new ideas, or what about this, or what about that? And that's where the philosophy of Voltaire comes in, really thinking through. Also, we've used this term before. He was a very strong deist, and a deist is somebody that believes that uh, while there might be a god or gods or some spiritual something out there, that religions are inherently not good. So he thinks that religions cause problems. And you got to understand at the time, the Catholic Church really had a lot of power and was abusing it with the king's okay, and they're backing up the king. So he saw religion as a bad thing, uh, That, and he also would agree on the separation of powers, that the church and the government should stay separate from each other. So he had a lot of influence on America and our founding fathers, and many of our founding fathers were deists, and we do have separation of church and state in America. And we also, the First Amendment, the first thing that they put in the Bill of Rights is freedom of speech. Now, the truth is you don't really have freedom of speech. You have liberty of speech. So you can't say anything you want. You can't threaten somebody or jeopardize people's safety. Uh, however, you can stand in a park if you get if you get a uh, permit and you can talk all day long about how bad the government is. And you can write a whole news. There's newspapers and there's, there's magazines and there's videos, documentaries dedicated to insulting uh, government members and what the government's doing. And while I don't think, know if that was completely his intent, the purpose was that the government does something wrong, that we can critique them, and then we could try to change things for the better. And I think that's a really great idea. So thanks for coming and visiting with me in my flip class on Voltaire. And you got to check this guy out. If you got more time, read about Voltaire. I know if you're a teenager, you're really going to like learning about it. He really is the real deal. He's getting kicked out of countries and arrested and in jail and writing sarcastic comic books essentially about the government. So I know you're going to like this guy. All right. Thanks for checking in.